Today's Captain's Blog is made possible by a grant from our newest Patreon supporter, Andrew Cole. Thank you, sir. I don't know shit about the plane emergency landing or that, but I can yeah. talk about lipos for days. All right. so, and I got a good demo that'll work for that. So, and cool. you're lucky that I have a battery that needed to be recycled out anyway. Are you Dutch or is your thing on crooked or both or what? The. Not, not stick a this is either that way or the plane is open. Because the line from here, the line here, meet right about there. No. <laughs> so, I don't know, we'll, we'll fix it in post. Thank you, sir. You don't want to do it? It's my birthday. Is it? Yeah, you want to my birthday. birthday. <laughs> birthday. Facebook is all a buzz. <laughs> Why the hell don't I have a pocket on that side? I'm Chris Bowden with the Geek Group. Chris, C-H-R-I-S, B-O-D-E-N. Bravo, Oscar, Delta, Echo, November. With the Geek, as in computer geeks. Let's get it as geek this time, not Greek again. The Geek Group And you can look right at me. Huh? You can look right at me. Okay. Lithium ion batteries have been in the news recently. A lot of them, especially the Samsung products have been blowing up. Last night there was an emergency landing with the battery that ignited, I don't know if it ignited, but they had to make a, make a, a landing uh, yeah, to, to dispose of it. Talk about the ion batteries and a little bit of what makes them so volatile. Sure. All right. Lithium ion and lithium polymer batteries both contain, obviously, lithium. Lithium is a very, very reactive metal, and these types of batteries, these are the batteries that uh, we use for model aircraft here in our avionics lab, and these are standard lithium polymer batteries. They're the same kind of batteries you'd have in your laptop, your cell phone, they're ubiquitous. They're using power tools, they're all over the place. The reason we use them is because they have a very high energy density, which means you can hold a lot of energy in a very tiny, very lightweight space. The downside to them is, if you overcharge them, they want to light on fire. If you undercharge them, they want to light on fire. If you just charge them and let them sit on a shelf for a long time, they want to light on fire. If you puncture them, rupture them, smash them, bash them, drop them, kick them, or just stare at them angrily for a while, they want to light on fire. It takes a lot to make them not want to light on fire. This is a recurring problem. So, one of the problems with them is, and this is especially true for us because we fly model airplanes with these, we tend to crash, and if you fly as bad as I do, we crash a lot. So I wanted to show you what happens if you puncture the seal on one of these, because they're actually, in this case, they're three little sealed bags, and as long as they stay like this, they're happy. You'll see this one has nice, sharp, square edges. This is what a good, happy battery looks like. If they're drawn too low, if they're undercharged, or if they're damaged in any way, they tend to puff up like this one. You can see it's all ballooned out. This is not a happy battery. And there are people, this is actually a really common problem. If you have an iPhone or something like that, or any kind of cell phone where it's all puffed out, like the case is bowed out on the back, and it might be cracking or you know making weird sounds, 
don't carry that in your pocket. Don't have this in your house. This isn't just like, like there was a lot of news about the one Samsung, that I think it was the 7, got a lot of news because they had a design error that overdrew the batteries and they overheated and they swelled up. This can happen on any cell phone. And there's a lot of energy in a cell phone battery, way more than you think. So I want to show you what happens when one of them ruptures because lithium, the, the lithium of lithium polymer, lithium ion, that lithium reacts very ferociously on contact with moisture. There's moisture in the air, especially today. It's, it's nice and humid out. So let's show you guys what we can do with one battery. You want to get set up? Yeah. Okay. This is going to happen right here. That's your blocking. I'm going to put this here, and I'm going to smack it with a hammer. And when I do, it's going to let out a big plume of smoke and maybe a little fire. Oh, you're fine. Also, you do not want to be downwind from this. It gives you kids with flippers and like eight flavors of inventive new cancer. Multi-million dollar broadcasting corporation and they have you shooting on a GoPro. Absolutely. Let's have to point that out. Never works. Is that a Kodak one? What is that? It is a Polaroid cube. It's a Polaroid. Shoots in 60 frames, but they all come out individually and they develop in 60 seconds. Absolutely. <laughs> you gotta shake. Pick them all over the yeah, do you gotta shake that after you make the shot? You just hold it out, and then it renders in the camera. Over there, because there's a big camera right there. Yeah, don't don't be on the. Okay, then be over where she is, and you're fine. Yeah, just get. No, go that way. Go, there you go. <laughs> when you're ready, sir. Oh, do it. Get it right in there. Yeah. All right. You're like fuck it. We got lots of those on a show. <laughs> Does your last name have one syllable or two? Is it Flizar or Felizar? Uh, mine's Powers. I, you're not Chris <laughs> so, Flizar? I'm not. Oh, I thought you were. No, he's our, uh, our assignment editor. Okay, because so. he's the one that was harassing. He bugs me a lot, though. I like him. All right, so explain what we're doing here. All right, what we've got is a very high-tech bit of science. We have a, a nail on a stick and a hammer. What we're going to do violate the structural integrity of the power unit in order to create a catastrophic chain reaction. We're going to smack it with a hammer and blow a hole in the side, which will short out the internal cells, cause the battery to overheat, and we're going to do some science to it. Cool. Okay. This is my favorite kind of science because it's a science where you got to smack it and run away real fast. Get it? Not enough. We're going to do it again. It's smoking, but just a little bit. I can do better. Hey, Batman! Yeah? Your MDF sucks. I need a better nail. Keep watching that. It might do something. I need a better nail, and I need it quick. Nail in a hard stick, not MDF. I think you got it. Yeah, but I just got one cell. I really want to rip it. Quick, quick, quick! Nope. There we go!
I had it melt down on your side of something. Oh, that'll do good. You may have to do a little editing on this one. Yeah. Can you put the stick the nail through the hole? surface area wants to react on contact with moisture, air, impure thoughts. Is that a good visual for you? Very good. I thought you'd like that. Let me get back over there and ask one more question. Sure. EPA is going to be here in 10 minutes. You know, with every, you know, the new cell phones that are coming out, you know, people want more power, more more of this and that in, in their cell phones. Is this just something that is unfortunately going to be uh, uh, a possible problem for the foreseeable future? Not with, for with very long, phone? really. Um, battery technology is progressing at a remarkable rate, and a lot of the new types of batteries don't have this problem. Um, there's some really amazing technology coming out there, and it'll be commercially available before too long. Right now, properly handled, properly used, LiPo batteries are very safe. It's not something you have to live in like constant fear of or anything. There's enough fear out there. But these are things that there's a lot of energy in a very tiny space, and you have to treat it responsibly. I mean, what I did is an extreme case. I just hammered a nail through a charged LiPo battery. So that's going to generate that reaction. But for the battery in your cell phone, the, think of the hundreds of millions of cell phones that are out there right now, and how often do you hear about somebody having their pants explode? This isn't a daily occurrence. And as long as you're treating it responsibly and you're not doing anything stupid, um, it's fine. But doing things like, if you leave your cell phone sitting on the dashboard of your car on a day like today, it's not going to have a happy battery. And if you do things with other types of stuff, most things like power tools and that have protection where if you run the battery too low, but there's some things that don't, and if you run a LiPo too low, that's a really fast way to puff it up and get it angry. Overcharging is really dangerous. Don't, and you, you who works at a television station, I'll bet if I walk into your station right now, they've got a tray somewhere with a whole bunch of batteries, camera batteries, walkie-talkies, stuff like that, that just sit there charging all night long, every day. That's incredibly a bad idea. Just way bad. Don't do that. Don't leave LiPo batteries charging unattended. This is such a big deal that if you go into any hobby shop and buy any hobby LiPo battery where it's, you know, the, the big raw battery, no matter how big they are, whether it's big giant ones or little itty bitty ones, every single battery you buy has a big yellow sticker on the side that says, do not charge this unattended. People have burned their houses down this way. Anything else? I think we're good. We're good. Sir. Thank you. Edit that down to five seconds. The final things would be like, Hi, I'm Chris! Be afraid of airplanes! Larry, let's roll. Larry, let's roll. Really? Today's Captain's Blog is made possible by a grant from our newest Patreon supporter, Andrew Cole. Thank you, sir!